it's a beautiful weekend and you are so welcome to Let's Talk Entertainment, the best entertainment show on Joy News on Multi TV. Today, I'll be bringing you all the stories that you have missed during the week. You don't want to miss this. My name is Becky. I'll be right back. You are so welcome back to Let's Talk Entertainment. This is the weekend edition of your favorite entertainment show on television. My name is Becky and I'm bringing you all the stories today. We are starting with the Rush Ghana DJ Awards 2017 highlight. It is right here for you. Uh, if you missed it all, here you go. The fifth edition of the Rush Ghana DJ Awards came off at the Silver Star Towers on Saturday, the 6th day of May 2017. The event, which was scheduled to start at 8 p.m., took off a little after 10. This event, which celebrated and awarded DJs, was well attended and saw a gathering of DJs with some believing they were retaining their titles and others also of the view of taking the award in, for the category in which they were nominated for. I'm taking the High Life category. I still believe that when it comes to music promotion in Ghana, nobody comes closer. So I'm going to retain my title. They, they can fight over the high life, Candyman and the rest. Yeah, but even if, even if, even if they try, I'll take the two. Nehoya Misere, because this time I'm in that category too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And you believe that you can take it from? Oh yeah, this time. This time around. But well, where were you last year? Uh, last year I was in. Hip life and gospel DJ. Did you pick them? No, I didn't. Are you picking any award apart yeah. from which Did, one? To, tonight, which I'm one? picking hip life DJ mm. and music promoter. I'm taking the go, uh, best gospel DJ of the year. Hey, people, Charlie, I like you guys. I like your film, eh? Yeah, I'm taking the best gospel DJ of no the year. No two is about and it. And as a matter of fact, I should have been in the best promoter category as well because I've promoted gospel music than any DJ in Ghana. DJ Black, Andy Dusty, Ohimawiyeje, Papa Bills, and King Lagazi were the DJs who won from the multimedia group. Let's break shit with the DJ Aziza. Now I'm in Castro. Let's do it like Aziza used to do it. The height of the show was when DJ Aziza was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award and took some time behind the turntable after DJ Black, DJ Castro, and DJ Andy Dusty had celebrated him. Reverend Aziza was excited that his kids had seen him in his element as a DJ and also shared his excitement on the honor done him. One, I feel like an old man because you guys are telling me that I have to retire. But secondly, I'm proud I was able to get my son and my daughter to see daddy doing something. They heard it, they never saw it. So I'm a very proud father today. I think after I blow some few tongues, some kinky go away. <laughs> well, I don't know, because when you're behind the thing, they didn't look different from what you used to, the turntable. Yeah, a little different because the turntable was kind of bigger. This is a little smaller. And it's been years since I stood behind it, but at least the ears are still working. Let's do it like I think it's how I used to do it. In the 90s, 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 in the 90
in the 90s with the black girls where you pull up. Hey! Pull up. All right, those were some highlights from the Rush Ghana DJ Awards 2017. At the same event, we caught up with DJ Azigiza, who was on it on the night, and he is calling for a union for the Ghana DJs. You know, he's calling for an association that would keep the DJs in shape, you know, get all the chaps out of the system and, you know, get a new, uh, something that would help the DJs in Ghana. We've been speaking to DJ Azigizak. Hallelujah. Please put your hands in your pocket. It's offering time. Gentlemen, some years ago, a mother wanted a son to be a doctor. This boy had nine in mathematics and he was scared of blood. He wanted to thank you and he ain't good. Wow, I feel humbled and I feel like an old man. <laughs> well, I don't know because when you are behind the thing, they didn't look different from what you used to the turntable. Yeah, a little different because the turntable was kind of bigger. This is a little smaller. And it's been years since I stood behind it, but at least the ears are still working. Okay. <laughs> the ears definitely have to work. What memory did it bring back when you went to stand behind there? It brought memories of the beginning. It brought memories of hard work. It brought memories of when people didn't respect the act and the work of a DJ. Yeah. Are they respecting it now? Yeah, but it can still be better. That is why I was advocating for a DJ, a serious DJ's union. Well, if you don't meet a certain criteria or whatever it is, you can never be part of it. Bro, DJing is a serious business that is respected all over the world. The time has come for us to like repackage ourselves. So it will happen. Okay, so it means that yes, so the DJ art is not being respected and mediocrity is creeping in. What can we do to curb that mediocrity? You see, the challenge here is that everybody can get a software, everybody can load a laptop, and everybody can play a song. In our times, it was manual, now it's digital. So things have kind of changed. But all the same, once the union come to play, we would then have to streamline who we call a DJ. And if you want a bro to work with you, you have to see the association. Reverend, if they called you to come to be come and be part of this cradle of this part of the cradle of this union, will you oblige to it? I will do it with all my heart. It is not sinning, it's an act. It is work. We can help others. For example, there is Ron um, Ron, Ron DMC. DMC. Yes. He's a pastor. He's a pastor now. But yes, yes, He's still yes. supporting the hip hop. Exactly, movement. exactly, exactly. That is not wrong. This is what I did. This is what made me. We can actually help shaping some young ones to become great DJs. Let's move on from a Zig Zag Jr. and talk about the music industry. How much do you think people make in the music industry? I'm talking about musicians. Do they actually make money out of music? Well, Sheila from the Business Decks put this report together. Music is entertainment and it is big business. Picture this, a fabulous career in music with adoring fans and a talent of spectacular proportions. This is perhaps the story of many of our musicians. But how does this translate into a sustainable income and revenue base? With an evolving music industry, the business side of the sector is becoming more evident, with a drive towards producing a more transactional and economic industry. Basically, the industry was a developing one. It did develop with, with the trend of music and our lifestyle. But it wasn't like an intentional industry if you compare to the developing countries where people really put money into setting up like Sony Music and that kind of thing. No, it was more of a hobby, talent kind of thing. And it develops with time, you know. And then when you had this soul-to-soul, uh, I mean, you were not born those years, but it was in the uh, early 70s, so to so. I mean, it was the secondary school uh, music chain. Although the evolution is well chronicled, it didn't happen overnight. 
the industry moved through various stages from the indigenous rich high life tunes to an era of dance hall to record sale, cassettes, DVDs, downloads, and online streaming. Stagecraft, live performance, and artistically choreographed music videos have become essential. If you are selling your, your CD rights or whatever for two years or for five years or whatever, it, it was based on the, the, the number of CDs you are able to shift within a specific time. So the buyer or the distributor or the purchaser will put all those things into consideration as to those days, people were able to sell as much as self. I use myself, for example, I think I, some time ago I gave my right uh, for two years and took uh, something like uh, $30,000 just to manufacture the CD, but Ghana is not part of it. Um, you need to know where the market is and then you ship. Because of the fact that people are not, the revenue stream of selling CDs and stuff like that, the fixated works are, are down. People are now charging more money for performance. As workers earn salaries for their services, royalty payments is the source of revenue for artists. And the presence of internet allows for a wider platform for artists to get more playtime and a wider market for the sale of tracks. Globally, according to some figures by Spotify, an online music streaming site, Eminem for instance, raked in $210,000 to $294,000 in royalties from the hit song Monster. One Republic also pulled in $346,000 to $484,000 in royalties for counting stars, and the list goes on. The International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, IFPI, says with 112 million paying subscribers to services such as Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal, which ensured growth in streaming, Revenue went up by more than 60% in 2016. Streaming has now been hailed as the savior of music. But what's the story here for our local musicians? I'm also with the foreign management because of royalties, because you don't want to wait for a system to catch up with you, because you're, you're trying to grow. Of course, I need to make money, and they distribute worldwide, not just country, the whole world. So it is not us that started it. We didn't start it. CBSA was in a structured system. Fela was in a structured system. Um, a lot of the people were in structured system. They just have this uh, data, a way of checking wherever your music is played. Automatically, the money will come. It's not like Ghana here where you have to pay for your songs to be played on the radio. Even at, uh, at the BBC, when your song is played, they'll pay you money for playing your song. If it's video, they'll pay you money for playing your song. I played at Walmart. There was somebody there to collect. Well, now, veteran musician Rex Omar is talking high life. You know, he thinks that Shata Wale should have been high life king than the... Uh, dancehall king that he claims he is. He says that Ghanaians should appreciate their own. They must, you know, get their own things together and put it out there instead of, you know, looking forward to uh, some people somewhere in Jamaica claiming dancehall and all. Shatawale could have been the king of high life instead of dancehall king. You know, that's coming from Rex Oma. What has happened to us is they started during our time. That is why high life or our traditional music was diluted. And they started calling, we mixed funk to high life and we started calling it burger high life. That is where the dilution started. Then it went on and went on. And then you see the bands started mimicking the American musicians. And it went on and went on. And then now, you see all the top Ghanaian artists, even if he's playing high life, he wants to call it. Uh, uh, dance hall or hip life. Listen, I've listened to three or four Shatawali songs, beautiful songs, big hits. Every, every aspect of the song to me is his own creation of a new brand of high life. But he prefers to call it dance hall. Why that? And look, he's using different instruments to play some of the elements of high life. 
Baby. Baby, baby, but can't say, eh, 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 Market it throughout the whole world, and everybody's making them. Ghanaians wants to be like them. It would have been far much more beautiful if I had them my way. I would have advised Shatawali. He would have been the king of high life around the globe. Because most of the things he's doing has more high life element in it. Jamaicans will never accept him as a dancehall artist. Let's stay on music and talk about a new album to hit town. This album is coming from boxer Bukum Banku and he is supported by Skew Face. And this album, he says that is a softball. And so he's calling out for Ghanaians to support him. And uh, he gave us uh, a little bit of the songs that you should expect right here on Let's Talk Entertainment. Why haven't you released any albums yet? You have a couple oh, of albums? Me and Shatawal, hey, me and uh, School Face, we have one we come out. I want to play here before we go. Okay. 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 Okay, Baku, so uh, who, who are you talking to? This sounds more like you are being sarcastic. You are talking to... You that know. is a, a support. We, me and School Face, we are doing our music like that. We're we, we not talking with any, anybody. I see. Uh, the, uh, our area like that, what we hear, I mean, we like our support. But I don't talk to anybody. Let's talk about the fastest rapper in Ghana. Um, well, I'm not the one saying he is the fastest rapper in Ghana. His fan says that he is the fastest rapper in Ghana. I'm talking about Sarkodie. Sarkodie has been named uh, one of Africa's richest men by Forbes. And so, well, if you're a Sarkaholic fan, if you're a Sarkodie fan, uh, you should know that he has money because he is at the ninth position. He is rich very rich in Africa. So if you meet him anywhere, you can just, you know, holler at him and he would give you some of that money. Let's take this one. According to Forbes, Sarkodie has racked up millions of views on YouTube for his music with his debut album and first single, Baby, among the favorites. He started out as an underground rapper which helped him cross paths with his former manager, Duncan, who helped launch his career. Staying true to his identity, he is a big advocate of Azonto, a Ghanaian genre that is said to have been born out of Kwanlogo, a traditional dance. Mewu, the first single of his fourth album, Mary, sold almost 4,000 copies on the first day of its release in Ghana's capital, Accra. His hard work does not go unnoticed. Sarkodie was the first Ghanaian to win a BET award and has the most nominations. In 2015, he was ranked the 19th most influential Ghanaian by ETV Ghana and in 2013 and 2015, he was ranked 8th on Forbes and Channel O's list of top 10 richest bankable African artists. His ambitions don't end here. In 2013, he launched his clothing line, Sark by Yaz, launched Obede Chief Headphones, which endorses, among others, Samsung and telecommunications company Tigo. In 2014, he also launched the music label Sarkcess to empower other African artists. 2017 promises to be an even more exciting year for Sarkodie. Sarkodie joins a list of other powerful African artists, including Akon, Senegalese-American, 
Whisket Nigerian, Devido Nigerian, Black Coffee from South Africa, Don Jazi Nigeria, Oliver Mtukuji Zimbabwean, Jidena Nigerian American, Hugh Masakela South African, and Tinash Zimbabwe American. I read music, and I just want to use this opportunity to talk to everybody who came in here tonight. All right, let's move on and talk about the best rapper here in Ghana, according to Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Manifest won the best rapper of the year, and he's been, you know, having a great year since he has a new, you know, something out, something that you need to see. His music has been, you know, selected for a movie. It, it was actually used in the movie. Uh, this is an uh, American movie, which, you know, is expected to win lots, lots of awards. And so we congratulate you, Manifest, on this achievement. Guinean rapper Manifest has contributed a credit song for a groundbreaking black historical fantasy short film, Forever Tree. The film starring Wendell and Olivia Washington premiered last week at the Bentoville Film Festival, an annual film festival held by Academy Award and Golden Globe winning actress Gina Davis in the USA. His song on Forever Tree features American singer-songwriter Polly A with production contributions by now frequent collaborator drum roll does the award-winning musician foresee a future in acting well not so fast one of the film's producers lee perez and olivia washington spoke with america's national public radio congratulations to you manifest on this big one we hope that you keep making ghana proud all right, so during the week, we also hung out with Kofi Kinata, the confession hit maker. And of course, I'm playing back all the fun that we had right here on Let's Talk Entertainment. Enjoy. <laughs> After the VGMAs, yeah. you went all the way to I the vanished. UK. Yeah. I mean, you celebrated your birthday, you performed there. Yeah. And give us a picture of how the things things went on there. At that yeah, After the VGMA. <laughs> I, I moved from Ghana on on the 14th. Okay. Yeah. On the 15th was my birthday, so voila for sure. And the program too was on the 15th, so we went there and it was fun. It was fun, you know. Birthday alongside program. The cakes were coming in. I was cutting cake, cutting cake. So cutting how many cakes did you receive that day? I lost count of them. Are you kidding? A whole lot, a, a whole, whole lot, lot of, of cakes. Them. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. so how was the performance? How, how was the reception? I, I, I understand you perform alongside Kwabena Kwabena. Yeah, Kwabena yeah. Kwabena also was on the on, on the, the bill. Yeah. yeah. So, it it was fun. Uh, people like people from UK knows how to party. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I got a chance to meet my other fans okay. at the other side of Ghana. You know, so it was fun. We sang along. We danced. We had fun and I returned. How is the feeling <laughs> like when you see people, you know, singing along to the song that you wrote yourself? You know, yeah. you sat down, yeah. wrote the songs, and uh, you, you have people singing along. It's amazing. Yeah, when you see stuff like that, it inspires you. Mm. It makes you want to do more. Oh. Yeah, and besides, that's the main reason why we did the song. We wanted people to sing, and yeah, we cannot sing it alone. Like. Want people to get interacted, so yeah. something like that. So, so you write all your songs. Yeah. Do you intend to take the writing thing, you know, to the next level, writing for other musicians? Because the only mus musician I know here in Ghana who writes, the only one I know, yeah. is Akwabwa. You write as well. Uh, a yeah. couple of them write yeah. their own songs. I don't know. I'm, do you want to? I'm, do I'm good at writing for myself. I don't know if some other person will like my style of writing. I don't know. But for now. You're writing I'm, I'm for writing for myself. So if someone wants some, then how many songs have you written so far? All Apart my from songs. The, the, the ones that I, I know. All my songs. All like, your songs. All my songs. Yeah, and mm -hmm. have songs that are not are yet to be released. So okay. Yeah, I, I'm still writing. You're still I, writing. I love writing. Like uh, I love challenging myself, doing stuff that that are not common, stuff mm -hmm. that people are not like doing. Yeah. yeah. So I write a lot, and I'm a critical thinker. Like you have to think. Before, before yeah, putting yeah, things so, out there. So I think about stuff that people don't pay attention to. Mm. Yeah, I always want to bring something new. When I surprise people, that's what I want to do. Because there are a whole lot of musicians out there and 
if you want to be listened or you want people to pay attention to you, you just have to give them the reasons like why they should they should come and listen, listen to, you. to you yeah so okay. and i'm sure you've given us enough reasons why i don't know yet listen to i don't know I'm, yet. I'm sure <laughs> i mean about confession confession is all over town yeah. and and you actually shot a video to that people yeah. were expecting more of that <laughs> video but uh, as you said before the interview you you swept them what happened mm, swept them but you know <laughs> we had the director that's your sky face okay. and me like being the co-director okay. yeah, i don't know that's up so yeah i'm sorry if like you got swept the, but the concept of the video is it your idea or the director's idea we, we shared ideas, we shared ideas. Yeah. and you agree yeah. that this is what you yeah want this to is what we, we wanted yeah mm. oh wow but so far this is the only like negative comment i'm hearing people oh, it's, it's not negative i like, mean people were expecting more it's not like the video is know, not good I, the video okay, is good okay. but people were expecting you to you know yeah. um, get drunk because we're talking about <laughs> yeah, drunk yeah, they, they, people there they, they have the expectations they want to but see god holding the steel, steel you know, <laughs> you know? so it, it's, it's just normal maybe you're gonna people, do a movie entitled confession <laughs> and they will see all those things all in. those things but, yeah. but you yeah. need to, to put that to tell together. our story so we couldn't yeah so we are sorry next time <laughs> so 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 tell me um, winning the artist of the year at uh, a recent award western, western music awards yeah how how do you feel about that one how do i feel about the yeah, the I whole mean, organization or the no, award the, the whole award you you were given the artist you won the artist of the year. <laughs> yeah i was i was i was on it i was happy uh, yeah. i saw you kneeling down somewhere yeah that fans. was you know I didn't get a chance to meet them after the VGMA. Okay. They went and a, a whole float for me. They did a float, two blast band and stuff like that. They were wearing my t-shirts, having fun, showcasing my award. Actually, I sent it to them because okay. uh, I couldn't go there. So uh, I really appreciate what they've been doing. I, I have to kneel down and thank them. My fan base are, well, I have grown up fan base, but mostly summer. Kids. Yeah. yeah, like a talented kid. Everybody knows how to sing my song. Yeah. So when I'm being interviewed, I don't want to talk about girl, 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 because they will be looking at me. I'm their role model. Oh, uh, and of course. Then uh, children like that, when they hear girls, 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 they will try and do something. They, they, their role model will eventually marry. Yeah, the kids that's that marrying. Yeah, that one be. That's what I'm talking about. That one will be official. I wasn't talking about other things. I was dating, talking dating, about dating, dating, dating. Yeah. You, you are see, not interested the, in those yeah, the boys, you see, <laughs> my fans, the young ones will be dating, dating then. Okay. That's why I don't want to. Okay, so you if, don't want to yeah. preach that yeah, aspect of yeah, it. Yeah. That's not, I think that's okay. Yeah. I mean, you go to so church. So I was, yeah. Which, which church? Church of Christ. Church of Christ. Yeah. Okay. You lead uh, the worship sex no, segment? No, no. Do I, I was born in that church, actually. I was born there. My dad is a preacher in one of the branches. Okay. Yeah, church of Christ. In, in Kwesimintim branch. Oh, okay. And yeah, I was born in the church. So I didn't choose my church. I just came you and met it. Yeah. So I'm a member. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any last uh, words for your fans out there, your little fans out there? <laughs> <laughs> I was at the. the uh, uh, oh. The the recent, yeah, the talented, talented kids. kids, and it was fun. So I would come and say, I want to snap a picture. Where's your phone? I don't have phone, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So you take the picture. Yeah, you take the picture I don't know. With your I'll, I'll just take it with my phone, and he, he or she will be happy, and she yeah. will go. She wouldn't even. Uh, oh, where am I getting it? <laughs> I snap picture for like two hours. Cause when you do this and you don't do this one soon, yeah. you'll be crying. I get came and said, Kinata, Kinata. I pick her up, and she didn't want to get down. <laughs> yeah, mother was going home. Oh. <laughs> One supporter, what the machinata, no, I say, oh, you home. First time in the door, I talk around the pair, but my back around the way I call for no so. One reception, I do, I will come, or I had in, I don't know. I say, me one being who they, we are one people, talk around the air, crying him for Nina, okay, Sigana. So, peace, thank you all. Mm, so that was Kenata. He's trying to tell you that he appreciates everything that you've been doing for him mm. since he got into the music industry, mm. both from you know his hometown Takradi and here in Accra. He is appreciative of everything. Kenata, you need to give us a song to wrap up this show, or we are not leaving. 
Friday night at the Wanji, I be wise and I guess and I ache. I say, when you must have one chair, I ever had to have a good movie now. They show what you move for, to move for some ante, a yellow part, a kiss, a home matching. All right, that's our show for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I did. Before I let you go, I'd like to say. Uh, happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially my mom and everybody who is a mom out there. God bless you all for the good things that you have been doing in our lives. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with us. Thank you so much for staying tuned to Let's Talk Entertainment. Join us same time next weekend for more. My name is Becky. Mm -hmm.